So now in this video we have a Schmidt trigger non-inverting comparator. So we have a lower input voltage to the plus pin. If I raise the voltage above halfway, because that's what I set, approximately halfway, we have a high output. Now I mentioned approximately halfway because I actually have to go down a little bit more to get the output low and then go up a little bit to get the output high. That is thanks to positive feedback. So you can see here on uh, the schematic first, I'm powering this with five volts, by the way. When the output is high, red LED lights up, you get uh, uh, probably like four volts or so um, because it doesn't make a perfect connection. And then uh, same with uh, going down low. Um, it uh, can get to zero volts with no load, but with the load, it's probably like a one, uh, one volt. But in any case, we got five volts there. It heads down towards zero, best it can, and then we can output five, best we can. So high output, uh, low output. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, we have uh, feedback coming back to our signal. So this is an op amp, and um, it's wired basically as a comparator. It's looking at these two voltages and the output wants to be more like the non-inverting input, the plus, than what the inverting input is. So we have a couple uh, 10K resistors to the inverting input, setting it to about five volts. If this voltage gets higher, the output's high. If this voltage gets lower, then the output is low. But we have the feedback there. So that's positive feedback. Positive means it helps the uh, plus input be even more uh, like what it is. Hopefully that makes sense. So if we go above 2.5 volts, then uh, the output goes high, and that raises that voltage a little bit more. And then if we lower this uh, below 2.5 volts, the output goes low right there, and it pulls that voltage down even further. So we have a middle ground region called hysteresis. We have to go up to the upper threshold and overcome that uh, before the output will go high. And then we have to go down below the uh, lower threshold uh, in order to set the output low. That middle ground region, it can be in either state. So we'll look at that now. Um, again, just a comparator. We got our trim pot to set a voltage. We're gonna ignore this resistor for the second. Uh, an adjustable voltage anywhere from positive and negative. And then there's our two 10K resistors going to the uh, negative. Always be careful looking at the data sheets that you note uh, what goes to plus, what goes to minus. Sometimes people will put the plus up higher and the minus down lower, but on the physical component, uh, the LM358, the plus is always below the minus. Be aware of that. So it lines up uh, in this diagram. It won't always. And um, I don't have problems with leaving this op amp that we're not using. There's two of them on this integrated circuit. Just leaving it floating. But um, generally speaking, it's recommended that uh, you set it up as a voltage follower. You put the uh, plus pin to uh, ground, have the uh, output go to the inverting input. That's usually the best uh, suggestion. Other than that, you leave the output floating if you're not going to use it. Um, so, coming back to this. We set half the voltage, go above half, I'll put high, go below half, I'll put low, but now we have a positive uh, feedback resistor right there, 10K, and um, higher value will be a smaller hysteresis range, and lower value will be a wider one. There's probably a point where it'll get too low, um, where the hysteresis, you know, um, uh, actually it should, if you go all the way to the rail, you know, um, then it should overcome even a low value resistor. But yeah, you'd have to really go out of your way. So, you know, it's adjustable, but within limits, of course. So in any case, uh, the output comes back and it helps the uh, trim pot here be more like what it already is. So it's low and uh, we got a low output. That's pulling that voltage down a little bit more until we set the output high enough. Now it's high. Now it's lifting this voltage a little bit, so we have to overcome it a little bit. And you'll be able to see the uh, hysteresis range. I'll uh, move that over a little bit. Uh, right about there, that range right there. That's the upper threshold limit, lower threshold limit. We will yank this resistor, and uh, you'll see that, uh, there we go, we got high enough, low enough. Uh, just barely wiggle this, and um, you know, other things 
could uh, maybe even make it oscillate if uh, it was just kind of like a little bit jittery or something. Now we'll do a negative feedback and that's kind of interesting as well. I kind of uh, wired this up without looking at the schematic and I noticed we had this period where like both of them are lit like that. So that's something you can do if you find that effect cool right there. But uh, if you want to make it a good comparator, it's better to make it a Schmidt trigger comparator where you give positive feedback. So you definitely went high enough to set the output high and then you definitely went low enough to set the output low. Um, but this middle ground region is not going to flicker back or forth anything. It's going to lock in place until you commit to going high enough or low enough. There's no uh, right borderline where uh, things can go haywire. So, in any case, um, yeah, that's uh, really about it. Generally, I assume you already looked at the uh, op amp comparator. The positive uh, feedback makes it a little bit more complicated, uh, not terribly. Um, so generally I show the comparator as well without the positive feedback even though it's not as uh, uh, useful but uh, any case hopefully you enjoy make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video